What's going on guys? Today I'm going to be going over the best methods for killing soul gazers. So if you need to get your hex hunter bow or the soul gazer pet, stay tuned because you will see the best methods in this video. Before I get any deeper into this video, there are a few incredibly important things for killing soul gazers. So the first reason you're going to be killing the soul gazers is to obviously be getting the drops for the ultimate slayer. Uh, I probably wouldn't kill these uh, for any other reason really, uh, and we'll get into that here in a second. So in order to help you get these drops, uh, the best way to be getting these drops is from the elite monsters. And fortunately, there is a way to be boosting the uh, spawn rate of the elites pretty high. So the way we do that is going here to the Grand Exchange and buying a Seeker's Charm here. You can see they are currently 62k. And basically what the Seeker's Charm does is it boosts the spawn rate of the elites from 1 out of 50 to 1 out of 10. So as you can imagine, these are incredibly helpful for you to be getting your uh, your drops, basically. And uh, the way that we get to, uh, or the way that we use these Seeker Charms is we teleport to the Zamrox hideout here uh, with the communication device. And then we go over here to the west and we're not able to surge in this area. And then we go through this uh, doorway here where these soul gazers are located. And uh, once we get into this area, we put the Seeker's Charm into this uh, portal thingy over here. And uh, basically, uh, each charm, like I said, will give you 10 kills of a boosted drop rate. So in a perfect world, each charm should be getting you about one elite spawn per charm. So we come over here to the portal. You can see we can put the charm into the portal. We chuck it in there and then we get a boosted uh, spawn rate for 10 more kills or 10 more kills added to however many you already have in there. And that is uh, how you use these charms. So one thing to note for these charms that uh, is probably important is this boosts the rate uh, globally. So it, you don't have to be killing the soul gazers in this uh, room here that you see. You can be killing them in the player owned dungeon or the wilderness and you will still will be getting that boosted spawn rate. So I uh, don't think you have to be killing them in here. Uh, it could be anywhere. One other thing that is incredibly helpful for uh, getting more elites is going to be fell stock incense sticks. You can see we have some fell stocks here and uh, these increase the spawn rate of an elite by 1% per rank. So up to 4% higher spawn rate. And then finally, uh, the last thing that will help you boost the spawn rate for elites is coming here to Fort 4 and 3 and then uh, building the Slayer Lodge thing here next to the Raptor. Uh, each tier of this building gives you a 2% higher rate uh, until you have obviously a 6% higher rate with the tier three building. So I would highly suggest also building the uh, Slayer Lodge over here to be getting even higher elite spawn rate. So one final note before we get any further into this video, uh, the drop rates for these creatures is unreasonably rare if you're not trying to force elite spawns as much as possible. Uh, on screen, you can see here, the drop rate is one out of one and a half million or 750,000 for the pet token. Um, from a standard uh, soul gazer. So definitely be trying to boost the uh, elite rate as high as possible. It's definitely worth using the seeker charms, uh, even though they are a bit expensive. Uh, because as you can see, if you're not boosting your elite rate, you're probably never gonna get the drops here. Um, and then even still, you can see here, the drop rate from the elites is also one out of 1500 and one out of 750. So it is still pretty unreasonably rare to be getting these drops even from the elites, which brings us to the final thing, which is Veil Ripper or Zaka. You can see here, Veil Ripper, it does look quite a bit different than uh, the other Soul Gazers. So it is pretty easy to spot. Uh, this monster has a one out of 1500 chance of spawning in place of an elite, and this guarantees your Hex Hunter bow drop. So uh, this is generally how people get their Hex Hunter bows. Um, you know, it's just the best way to do it. You can buy this monster from somebody else. Uh, I'm not really sure where you do that anymore now that the forums are gone, uh, but I'm sure there's a Discord for it maybe somewhere. Uh, if anyone knows, definitely put that in the comment section where you're able to purchase these. But essentially, if somebody gets one of these monsters to spawn, uh, they will post it or sell it to you, and then you can go and purchase it um, from that person. 
Uh, mathematically, I think is if, uh, if your elite spawn rate is somewhere around one out of eight, um, it will take you anywhere from, I think like 10 to like 13,000 kills on average to be getting your drops here. So definitely, definitely be ready for a pretty long grind with these soul gazers. For the preset with this method, uh, I'm going to be kind of just going over some of the basics here. Um, so first off, uh, the relics, you see we have Conservation of Energy and Fury of the Small. Uh, these are by no means required, uh, but I would definitely be trying to get these if you can. Uh, conservation of Energy helps a ton for this method. Uh, you can see Karomic 4 with Chain. Uh, if you are using magic, I don't think it's worth using magic at all if you don't have greater chain. So definitely be trying to get that if you don't have it. Um, you know, if you don't have greater chain, necromancy is just so much better that, you know, there's no reason to ever use magic. Um, and then obviously the familiar, because these can be poisoned, uh, the blood reaver is really, really good. Uh, for the gear setups, you can see I have a necromancy and a magic preset here. Don't think that these are hard requirements by any means. You definitely could be, you know, downgrading some stuff most likely, but these are just some example um, magic and necromancy presets I have. Uh, basically for magic, you're gonna want to have three pieces of Crypt Bloom and um, at least a Knock Staff, I would think, for the weapon. Uh, the Inquisitor Staff doesn't work here, so do not be using that. Um, and then for the necromancy setup, you can see I just have the tier 95s with tier 95 armor. Again, don't think you absolutely need this. Tier 90 weapons will be fine. And uh, if you have the tier 90 tank armor, that will also work. The only thing I'm not certain on is if you have the tier 90 death dealer armor. I don't know if that would work, but I don't really see why it wouldn't. So um, yeah, definitely don't be thinking you need these uh, pieces of gear or whatever. You can definitely be downgrading. Uh, your kills per hour will just go down slightly and then for the inventory um you know obviously spring cleaner cannonballs and then the uh, ritual shard and excalibur are really good uh that little item next to the excalibur is the communication device this just teleports us to the zamorox layer um so we can fight these things there you can swap this out with a codex if you're using the player owned dungeon or even something like a games necklace if you're using the wilderness method to uh, teleport to corp and then, uh, you know, obviously just overload weapon poison, the cannon, and a blood reaver. And then next to that, we just have our uh, powder of penance as well as incense sticks. If you're using the powder of penance, definitely be switching to salves or something to manually upkeep your prayer because I have found um, that the powder of penance doesn't fully upkeep your prayer some of the time. And then the incense, uh, like I said, bellstock incense is really good here. And then the other incense is just a uh, Lantadime and Quorum for the increased potion duration and the extra damage. So uh, these are just some example presets that you should use. And uh, again, you can definitely be downgrading. So now to get to the Soul Gazers, there are three different locations you can fight these in. The first is going to be in the Sunken Pyramid. Uh, I don't actually have any Soul Gazers in my Sunken Pyramid. But if you do capture five souls, you can put these in the small room. Uh, obviously, you're going to need an aggression potion for this. Uh, if you're not going to be using the uh, personal dungeon, though, uh, you have to complete the Dishonor Among Thieves. I mean, you have to do this anyway, but if you complete that quest, you will get this uh, communication device thingy in your inventory, and this will teleport you to the Zamrox hideout. And then we just go west over here to the doorway. And then you can see this is where the uh, soul gazers are located. There are also a, uh, there is also an area in the wilderness here. Uh, if you teleport to the corporeal beast, um, you could obviously do this with a games necklace or with a uh, wars portal. They are located in the wilderness right here by this uh, little lava pit thingy here. Uh, you could get here from corp, go uh, you know southeast, or you could go to ED2 and go all the way south. Um, corp is a little bit faster. And uh, the reason you would fight these in the wilderness over the other areas is because uh, they are actually aggressive in this location. So you don't have to use an aggro pot. And um, it is, you know, I guess a little bit faster because they're aggressive. I don't really notice that it's a huge difference at the end of the day, but uh, you can fight them here if you do want. Uh, I would probably only do this method with necromancy. And uh, if you do fight these guys in the wilderness here, this is where you place your cannon. Uh, you don't want to put your cannon too far to the uh, east over here because as you can see there is a green dragon over there 
and you don't want to be tagging these because they'll just walk up and burn you with their dragon breath. But uh, as you can see, these guys are aggressive, and uh, this is where you do want to put the cannon. And then I find, you know, just standing somewhere around like here-ish is probably the most ideal place to be standing. Um, apparently we're not attacking. Um, but yeah, I find like somewhere around here is probably the most ideal place to be standing. Um, you can see it does move you, so it's not perfect. So for the standard dungeon, uh, I find this to be the, um, besides the player-owned dungeon, uh, if you don't have the souls yet, you can see here I'm trying to capture them. But uh, if you don't have the souls yet, this is definitely probably the best method, I think, uh, to be killing these. The wilderness is okay from what I've found, but the wilderness seems to be relatively variable and it's kind of annoying to fight them there from what I found. But as you can see here, we just come into the dungeon over here. You can uh, just plunk all of your charms straight into the portal. It's really easy to do that. Um, and then uh, I like to place my cannon down here. The tile on the most north, um, you can see there's like a different texture here. We put it right uh, on the tile south of that texture you can see. And the reason we do this is so it tags as few of the seekers as possible. Uh, unfortunately, in this dungeon, you will tag a few seekers from what I've noticed. So uh, definitely be careful of that. But uh, yeah, this method does tend to be relatively straightforward. So what we do here is uh, obviously we activate all of our incense. You can activate the powder of penance, obviously turn on your book, uh, overload, weapon poison. Uh, I like to darkness, especially off the start. Uh, you may or may not need this depending if you have enhanced devoted on your gear. I don't have it on my gear, so uh, I find darkness does help quite a bit when you don't have that. And then we just use uh, prey magic as well as sorrow. And then all you do is start up the cannon. And it should be a relatively straightforward method here. So you can see with this method, you do unfortunately get dragged around a little bit when you do this. Um, it is kind of annoying that this happens, but you know, unfortunately there's really nothing you can do. Um, but with this method, I do find the, um, if you do get dragged too far like this, I do like to run back to the center, but usually you can see there, my character automatically was doing it. But yeah, if you do get dragged, it does help to run back to the center a little bit just so you don't get dragged too far. If you do get dragged too far, these guys will, uh, you know, run away over here because they don't have the uh, attack range to do that. But uh, yeah, as you can see, this method does work pretty good at mostly only attacking the soul gazers here. And, uh, but again, there is occasionally some seekers that do kind of uh, attack you. But yeah, with this method, um, just be making sure you're focusing down the uh, elites that, the elites that spawn. You can see an elite just spawned here. Uh, and there's a couple of reasons you want to do that. Obviously, the elites hit kind of hard, so if you're just sitting there getting piled by an elite and all these other little guys, it does kind of become a problem. But also, if an elite is spawned and you kill a normal soul gazer, um, you can't actually have two elites that spawn. So if you do kill a normal soul gazer instead of the elite, it'll just start wasting your charges, which obviously is not good. So make sure you are uh, focus firing the elites when they do spawn. And uh, yeah, as you can see, uh, they do spawn relatively frequently and you should be able to get a fair amount of kills per hour with this method. So with this method, you should be able to get somewhere around 450 to about 475 kills per hour. It's kind of variable because it really does depend on how many elites you get. Obviously, more elites equals less kills per hour, but you want to be getting more elites because that's where your drops come from. Uh, and with about 468 kills per hour, which is what I got with this small test here, I got about 900,000 Slayer XP, uh, 940k Necromancy XP, uh, 300k HP XP, and then approximately 24 mil an hour in GP. Uh, it is worth noting that when I was doing these tests, I was not actually on a Slayer task at all. Uh, so you could be expecting to get um, maybe even up to 500 kills per hour if you're on task. So that is definitely worth noting. And then the other thing that's worth noting is the GP per hour mainly comes from the Hex Hunter bow. So it's pretty much an all or nothing type GP per hour where you make pretty much negative money until you eventually get a Hex Hunter bow. I think at the end of the day, uh, you might profit a little bit once you get your Hex Hunter bow, but it's, uh, you know, I think like the Seeker Charm math pretty much comes out to the price of the Hex Hunter bow if you get it on drop rate. So, um, yeah, it's pretty negligible GP per hour in reality. 
So really quickly to go over the wilderness method, you can see I have the cannon just north of that little rock thing there. Um, but with the wilderness method, you can expect to be getting about the same kills per hour. I think it's technically a little bit faster because uh, with the other dungeon method, you might have a few seeker kills per hour, but it's pretty similar as far as I've really noticed. Um, the wilderness method, I find to be, again, maybe slightly faster kills per hour, but it is a little bit more annoying and it does seem to be a bit more variable. Uh, it seems like these soul gazers tend to get stuck behind like trees and like they can get stuck behind the uh, lava pit and they can kind of just get stuck behind a bunch of random garbage all over the place. So I tend to not like this as much, but it should be about the same kills per hour. I think for Iron Man, this could be better because you don't actually need to use the cannon here. Uh, the uh, soul geysers are automatically aggressive so you could just use that to your advantage and uh forget the cannon and just have them automatically aggro you but um again i don't really find this method to be worth using over the normal dungeon just because it seems to be more variable it might be able to get faster kills per hour but it will also be able to get slower kills per hour too and at the end of the day it's probably about the same thanks for watching guys uh, hopefully you guys use these methods to get your 10,000 kills and your Hex Hunter bow and uh, the pet because uh, these drops are ridiculously rare. Um, but uh, I did try to get some player-owned dungeon footage for you guys, but I got zero souls in like an hour and I uh, tried to use the FC and there was no one in it and I couldn't find an FC to uh, get any player-owned dungeons. Uh, so if anybody knows an FC that's like active for uh, player owned dungeons, definitely drop it in the comment section below because uh, that would be very helpful. But um, yeah, I think the player owned dungeon method is slightly faster. Maybe it's probably pretty similar speed to the rest of these. I mean, you don't get a cannon, but it's a little bit easier to loot. Um, so yeah, uh, I did try to get that, but uh, it didn't quite pan out for the video. But uh, yeah, if you made it this far in the video, definitely drop a like on it. It really does help promote the channel to more people. And uh, as always, guys, thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one. Also, I hope you like that weird little thing where my character threw out a little preset. That was pretty cool.